Hello, good morning. This is a video presentation on preparing a blood film or a blood smear and staining this. The person who is going to be helping me is our lab technician uh, whose name is FND Hatta. This is him. Okay. And uh, we will need certain material for this whole preparation and what we need is a set of glass slides which are named, numbered as 1, 2, 3 and 4. Then we also need another slide which we call as a spreader slide. Then we need alcohol swabs. Then we need a sterile lancet as well as we can use another injectable type uh, which is uh, more limiting and apart from that we need also cotton balls and we need the next thing that we need is called as the blood sample. Now the blood sample can be obtained by if you want the capillary blood sample we use the fingertip this is the fingertip that can be used and if you need a bigger sample size or the venous blood sample then we use the venous blood sample. This is a venous blood sample which is mixed with an anticoagulant called as EDTA and that's all that we need and once we have all this we need another thing to stain them and therefore this is called as the Leishman stain. So let's proceed with the recording of preparation of the blood smear or the film. Okay, first thing what we need is an alcohol swab in order to clean the fingertip. So we keep this in place as well as we keep an alcohol or a cotton piece in order to stop the bleeding. Then what we need to do is take the alcohol swab and apply it to the fingertip. This is in focus, isn't it? Allow the fingertip to dry and then you can use a tip and break the tip and use a sterile lancet and you can swing the fingers in order to increase the blood flow towards the periphery. Then if you you have to press the base of the finger and boldly prick in order to get a blood sample and this is how we do it. This is how the blood sample is obtained and this is going to be transferred onto the slide. That is how we take the blood sample and then we place it over here and then another sample over there. So that is all that is required in order to make the slide. Now one has to hold the slide firmly on the table and use the spreader slide. Keep the slide or place the slide in front of the blood drop and bring it backwards and allow the blood drop to spread from one end to the other end and then move it forward in a uniform pressure. Holding the slide, bring the drop of blood and then prepare the smear. Similarly, do the others also. And this is the way we can have a set of four slides. This is how it will appear when the blood smear is made. 
and this is how the blood smear appears and this will be a wet one whereas this will be how it will look when it is dry okay so we have to allow this to dry and only after it is dried we place it on to the staining rack uh, which is here in the sink you place them across the staining rack and so therefore what I need to tell, stress upon this is that you have to have a head end and a tail end or a feathered end and then two edges or borders should be there two lateral borders a head end and a tail end this is how the smear has to be prepared and the smear or the film has to be spread over more than three-fourths of the slide this is what is important we place them across now they are all dry and we do we use this one we keep that okay then we add the stain now this stain is called as a Leishman stain and this stain contains uh, methylene blue, an acidic dye, uh, or sorry, it's a basic dye. And we also have eosin yellow, uh, which is dissolved, both of them are dissolved in acetone-free methyl alcohol. The reason why we use acetone-free methyl alcohol is uh, acetone will break down the cells and we don't want that to happen and that's why we use these so you add a number of drops to cover the smear and leave it aside for two to three minutes now what is actually happening during these two to three minutes is there will be no staining actually taking place because the pH is not ideal. At this particular stage, we have the fixation of the cells or uh, the blood film onto the slide that is taking place. This is why it's very important for us to leave it for at least two to three minutes. The reason why I am rocking this is because there is a slight amount of tilt and we need to see that the film is fixed uniformly and therefore allow the stain to cover the whole smear in a proper way. Here is the distilled water. Pause it. Two to three minutes time is over, the fixation is over. Now, without spilling the stain, we add double the quantity of distilled water using the squirt bottle. And without taking care to see that we don't spill the fluid. So that is what has to be done. And then we keep rocking it and wait for eight to ten minutes or maybe even a little more uh, this will be by trial and error because you need to know the quality of the stain and that's what is important uh, one needs to keep it mixing or blow air on it and then you will notice that there is a kind of a scum color which will be developing over the surface and that is very important for us to recognize that proper mixing is taking place at the same time we know that the staining is taking place now now during this 10 to 12 minutes the actual staining takes place because the pH is going to be ideal because after the addition of distilled water it undergoes ionization 
and that's what is important for the staining to take place. Now, with regards to the stain, the white cells uh, are going to be stained. Otherwise, uh, when you see, look at a blood film, it doesn't uh, appear to be colorful. If we are staining it to make them colorful, and as you know, the methylene blue uh, will stain, which is the basic dye, will stain the acidic part of the cell, that is the nucleus and the granules, which are acidic. And then you have the eosin, which will be staining the, uh, which is the eosinophilic uh, part of it, and that will stain the basic part of the granules, the eosinophilic granules. And that's how the staining will take place. The nucleus will become blue in color, whereas the granules will appear either blue or will be appearing reddish pink in color. So we leave this for about 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. The reason why we do this mixing uh, ro by rocking the slides is to prevent the scum particles or the stain particles to stick onto the slide because otherwise we will have black dots. Uh, when we are observing the cells and uh, they may not be the granules that are stained. So when the 10 to 12 minutes duration is over, we take the flush bottle and we flush it out. This is how it has to be done. Similarly, you flush out the others and then wash it under running tap water for at least two to three minutes. So that complete excess of stain is washed out and these scum particles are also removed. So this is how we open up the tap <coughs> and then <coughs> we wash it under running tap water. This is how we do it. Okay. And than the other one. You have to make sure that it's washed properly and thoroughly. Thorough washing has to be done. You may be wondering as to whether the blood film will get washed away. It's not possible because it has been fixed already by using acetone-free methyl alcohol. And the alcohol in the stain helps in the fixation of the smear onto the slide. Once this is over, all you have to do is allow it to dry. But before that, we wipe the undersurface of these slides by using a wet cotton so that any of the stain that is spilled over is removed and then we keep it at an angle for it to dry. This is how we can allow it to dry. Take another one and allow it to dry. Keep it at a slanting angle so that it will dry by itself. Once it is dry, it is ready for viewing under the microscope.